Our God most definitely answers our prayers, listens to our prayers, and moves in response to our prayers. Be thankful for what God has blessed you with and for what God will bless you with. Wishes! Hello? Before your sister passed away, you said you prayed night and day. But I have faith that you will intervene tomorrow and I will finally get the success that I've been praying for. Keep writing. Maybe you can get a smaller publishing company to put out one of your future books. You know, what did I do that was so bad in this life that you can't answer one? Just one of my prayers. I can't remember people's names. Your, uh, your... Starts with a B. Beltron. Ben. Benson? Brian. Brian. And, uh, your... The butler. Only if I've been demoted from being your PA. Oh, uh, sorry, Sugar Pops, but I'm not gonna be able to make dinner tonight. You're Darren Bennett. We got married. And you are? I'm Betsy. Betsy Simon. Betsy Simon. Yeah, no. I'm married. I live in a mansion, and all of this because apparently the books I've written have done really well and have made me wealthy. If what you say is true, it would appear that God has answered your prayer. All of them? If he answered them all, then it only makes sense. He's got to put things back. Not now. Sorry to bother you, but your sister is here. So if you ask God to put things back and he does, then you lose Sally again. So you finally believe me? No! You used to work for us, for Wishes Incorporated, until the end of last year and then you quit. We caught her. We're taking her to court. And that's it. You think Sally took the money? Here you go again. You know this. She's a criminal. You're so busy being a celebrity, you can't even see what it did to you or your family. Whatever the reason, that is no justification for what you did. So where do I go from here? <sighs> Let God do what he does. And trust that he knows what he's doing. Not my will, but your will be done. Again, God answered my prayer, and I returned to the life I was supposed to live. I probably won't tell anyone what happened. Not that they'd believe me, except for maybe Pastor John. Like Anne Westfall suggested, I will continue to write. My next book will be fiction to those who read it. But to me, it really happened. Time to celebrate wishes. No, this one's not about you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for guiding me through the pages of this book. I hope readers will like it and maybe benefit from it as I did. If it ever gets published, that is. Sorry.
Fourteen. Oh boy, chocolate chip. Oh, white chocolate. Chip. Oh, did you make them? I did. Okay, well, I'm probably gonna sneak off with whatever's left over. Mm, you should. <laughs> I made them just for you. Pastor John. Yep. Yeah. I have the uh, flyers for the fundraiser. What oh, do you think, Jerry? That looks great. We really appreciate it. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take them, give them to your wife, and have her run them off. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Well, how's that fundraising coming along? Mm, well, not as good as we were hoping for. Yeah, repairing steeples over 100 years old, not to mention the roof. Yeah. It just isn't cheap. Well, if we don't raise the funds, where will we go? The elders are looking into moving services, maybe. Uh, perhaps the community center. Uh, but anyway, no, we are going to stay positive, uh, continue our prayers, and God will know what to do. Speaking of prayer, it's done. What? Heavens to Betsy, I finished it yesterday. Congratulations. Oh my gosh, uh, how long did it take? Six months, give or take. Is that how long the other ones took? This one came to me a little easier than the last ones. Oh, but there's no wishes this time? Well, technically she's in it. Uh, but uh, no, this, this one isn't about her. Hmm, I wonder who the main character is then. Obviously, from the title, she's got my name. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Um, I copyright it, send it to potential publishers, agents. Okay, what about the woman you were working with? Oh, you said she had some sort of connections to the publishing business. Oh, things didn't work out with her. Well, that's too bad. Uh, well, good luck, and uh, I can't wait any longer. Uh, we've got to dig into those cookies. Yeah, let's have to. Let's see what you did. <laughs> You look amazing! Veronica! Thanks. I'm moving to LA! Wow. Did something happen? Are you gonna be on a TV show? No. It's just time to go. There's nothing here in Chicago for up and coming actors my age. Bit of a contradiction there. What do you mean? Well, isn't up and coming usually a term used for young girls? Never mind. Uh, what about all the shows that they shoot here, though? I mean, there's Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Plumbers. Impossible. Too many actors and not enough shows. Aren't there more actors out in LA? And wouldn't the competition be even greater? Not if you stand out. You stand out, do you? What do you mean? Never mind. Do you need any furniture? I'm selling everything. Uh, no. I don't. I don't have enough room as it is. You're not bringing anything with you? Can't. I'm moving into a commune. A commune? Yeah, with other people who can't afford a place to live. A lot of actors do that. It's like a homeless shelter, but with better restroom facilities, and there's a Starbucks nearby. Wow! That sounds awful. What do you mean? Never mind. Here's my card with my cell number. If you know of anyone looking to buy furniture or kitchen stuff or things that people need, you know, to live. Ronnie Love, mm -hmm. professional actress, model, singer, dancer, comedian, voiceover artist, stunt double, body double, movie extra, poet. Dark is the night I can't see. Death is holding his hands over my eyes. Dark is the night on one knee. Death is stepping on my life. I can't breathe. Take it away, far away. Wow. I know, right? So much talent and not enough room on that stupid card. Oh, yeah, where would you put it? <laughs> Say, whatever happened to that film audition you had a while back? Which one? The one with the killer zombie trees. Oh, yeah. Amazing concept. Amazing script. And an amazing director. Couldn't raise the money. Never got made. 
Darren Bennett. Right. You've heard of him? Nope. Got another audition in a couple hours. Another film audition? Dog food. Excuse me? Commercial. It's for the role of a dog owner that believes her dog is going to be a movie star, even though it's a mutt. You'll nail it. Thanks. Break a leg. You bet. Mr. Daiquiri, and they have been here for at least the past six decades. And why can't we see them, Mr. Carter? Well, they have infiltrated our world leaders and are slowly taking over other countries. The United States? Especially the United States. I mean, how else would you explain all the chaos and mayhem dividing our country right now? They control us, Mr. Daiquiri, and they are everywhere. They do with subliminal messages in our newspapers, magazines, TV commercials, billboards, internet websites. Who is doing this, Mr. Carter? Aliens. Illegal aliens. No. No, no, no. Aliens from another universe. Extraterrestrials. Those little guys who like to phone home. No doubt. And I suppose they look like us, which makes it hard for us to see them. Not unless you're wearing these. You're an idiot, Mr. Carter. All right, somebody contact the producers of Finding Bigfoot. Tell them we've got another nutball that's looking for his own reality show. I have a PhD in neural extraterrestrial science from Cambridge, and you told me you believe me, and you wanted to enlighten the world and bring this important matter to the light, and now you... Oh, you're rude. No doubt. Hi, Betsy. Mrs. Piscotti. I really like the look of this place. Oh, well, thanks. We just finished remodeling last week. <laughs> you don't have an appointment. But I have a concern. Concern? You remember that tooth that the dentist couldn't put back in? Yeah. I've given it more than enough time, but I just can't go on eating without it. It's caused a lot of lopsided chewing, as I knew it would. So, I need him to pull the one on the other side. You know, for balance. Balance. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming there's nothing wrong with the other tooth. No, no, no. Mrs. Piscotti, I am sure that the dentist will not pull a healthy tooth. Um, it, it would have to be infected or cracked. Oh. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Mrs. Piscotti, wait! Hello? How have you been? I've been good. Heavens to Betsy. 
I'd like to read it. An associate of mine, Stacy Blair, told me about it. I'm sorry, Miss Westfall. Haven't we been here before? It's obvious there are still some bad feelings about what happened. Otherwise, you would have sent me a copy of the manuscript instead of me finding out about it from other agents through the grapevine. And I understand. And there's probably no way I can convince you I did nothing wrong. So, I'm not even going to try. Instead, let me make it up to you. Give me a chance to read the book. And if it's as good as Stacy says it is, we'll take it from there. What have you got to lose? Well, should I? Okay, you better be right about this. I'm very impressed. Thanks. I like the story. The whole idea of God answering the main character's prayers all at once is very clever. Thanks. The story's been done before, of course. It's a wonderful life and such, but it's so sweet, so heartfelt. And what happens with the sister? Heartbreaking. I also like the whole thing about the main character being a writer of children's books with dreams of success. Inspired by personal experiences. Uh-huh. The main character even has a similar name, Betsy Simmons. I've never named a character after myself before. Uh-huh. However, I did not like the publisher, who may have been a con artist. Sorry. All writers draw from experience one way or another, even if your facts weren't quite right. Anyway, even though most would consider it a religious novel, I think the story has great crossover appeal to both religious and mainstream markets. I know a couple of publishers who might be interested in the book. But before I can send it to them, I need to become your agent. No money up front. I get the usual 15%, but only when they pay. I'm willing to do this if you are. If you will trust me, Okay. He did it, Wishes. God is still answering my prayers.
You don't start helping out, you're not getting any of this. has a, a, a very unique writing style. Anne, good to see you. Dorothy, how's he doing? You know Terrence, he's working the room the best he can. Dorothy, this is Betsy Simon. She's the author of Heavens to Betsy, yeah. So you've read it. <laughs> no. But I've heard a lot about it. I'll take your coats. Help yourself to finger food and drinks, and I'll let Terrence know you're here. Mostly mainstream authors and PR people here. I'll introduce you to them later. Be yourself. Talk. Mingle. That's why we're here. But stay away from the religious aspects of the book. We need to focus on the mainstream audience. Keep it low-key for now. There may already be an 800-pound white gorilla in the room from the title alone. Ciao. A white gorilla? They were the Simon and Garfunkel of England. Um, Peter and Gordon. Yes. Your age is showing. <laughs> well, let it. It was a better time. Magical. Speaking of magical, love the book. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Me too. So you've read it? No, but I've heard of it. Well, I did, and it was wonderful. Reminded me a little bit of the movie uh, The Family Man. You know, the one with Nicolas Cage. Oh, so it's fiction. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about it from the mouth and the mind of the author. Well, it follows the lead character, Betsy Simmons. Simon. Simmons. Oh. She is a children's book author who prays uh, for a big publishing deal to happen, and then when it doesn't, she blames God for not answering that or any of her other prayers ever. Then all of a sudden, he does. He answers all of them at once. So it's like that book, The Shack, a book about God. No. It's doing very well. A Christian book? No. It's a book everyone can enjoy. It's such a heartfelt, delightful story. Mm. You'll laugh, you'll cry. <clears throat> Are you just as bored as I am? Could be worse. Keeps moving around new furniture. Are you an author, an agent, or other? <laughs> an author. And you? A friend of the friend of the life of the host. Oh. <laughs> other. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the name of your book? Heavens to Betsy, and I'm sure you haven't read it. No. Of course not. Interesting title, though. How's that? The phrase, Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a mild American exclamation of shock or surprise. It's dated, only rarely encountered in print, and then most often as uh, an evocation of times past. 
it was also used as a substitute for swearing. <laughs> but where it comes from, nobody has the slightest idea. Betsy? Betsy? I gotta go. I guess you'll just have to buy it to find out. Nice meeting you. Hello? Betsy Simon. Yes. <laughs> Terrence McAfee, <laughs> the host. But uh, not a very good one, as you can see by how long it's taken me to finally speak to you. Oh, no. Hi. <laughs> oh, welcome. So I'm, uh, I'm told we have something in common. <coughs> the same agent? Ah. Yes. Is she any good? <laughs> oh. oh, I like you already. Uh, is she? Yes, uh, but don't feel obligated to tell her that. <laughs> you know, she knows her stuff. She can come off a bit cold or, you know, impersonal at times. It's the nature of the beast. Do what she says, you'll make a lot of money. A yearbook? Now, I'm told it's doing really well. Oh, yes, yes, I've been blessed. So you're a Christian writer. Uh, no, not exactly. I'm just curious. in a hurry? There is an Elvis Presley movie marathon on this afternoon, and Clambake comes on it, too. Oh, Clambake. Is that a movie? Oh, it's a classic. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know you were an Elvis fan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, th th thank you very much. It's really just all on the lip. It's, oh. You got, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, just, just a little uh, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's happening here. Something's different. Uh, oh, no glasses. Mm -hmm. Uh, book sales are doing well, so I finally saved enough money for LASIK. Nice. Speaking of the book, yeah. tell me you've read it. I'm so sorry I haven't, but I promise I will. Oh, okay. Um, hypothetically, uh, would it be okay for someone to keep their faith low-key for the sake of success? Low key. The other day I went to a party with Anne to promote my book. And of course there were a lot of people there associated with the mainstream market. So Anne told me that I needed to keep the faith aspects of my book out of conversations with others. And? I did what she told me to do. Mm. Pretty much denied my faith and being a Christian. Three times. Three times, huh? It was a bit like Peter. And I felt really guilty afterwards. Whoever denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. I know, I know. Betsy, you know, it's the 21st century, and oh, there's so much political correctness and the fear of being labeled a fanatic, it just makes it harder than ever to stand for something. Especially for him. And, and I don't have a problem doing that one-on-one, -on -one, but in public, I mean, that's a whole nother story. It's it's so difficult. I mean, in the other life, I had to speak in front of a group of atheists. It, it... I mean, in the, in the book, the character, Betsy, had to speak in front of an atheist organization, and, and it was very, very difficult for her. 
Your book has now just gone to the top of my to-do list. Sorry, girl. Hi, Anne. You missed the phone interview with Chicago Magazine. I did. I am so sorry. I'll see what I can do, but this is the second time. I know. I know. It's just getting harder to, to do all these appearances and, and interviews and still keep my job. Well, if your book keeps selling, you may not need that job anymore. I'll reschedule the interview, but these are busy people with limited availability. Plus, I got a request for you to do a podcast appearance. And what about your next book? My next book? Many authors deliver two novels a year. You're going to need to start writing soon. Any ideas? No. I, I haven't really thought about it. Well, you should. We need to use the exposure you're getting for this one to promote the next. Okay. Um, uh, I'll start thinking about what I want to do next. With all due respect, Betsy, you really should get a better handle on your time. Have you considered hiring a part-time personal assistant? Okay. Okay. I'm really sorry, Anne. We'll talk later. Kisses to wishes. Where in the world am I going to find a PA? Good morning. Hi, how can I help you? Brian! Yes. Well, have we met? No, 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 no. I, 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 I had a feeling it was one of those B names, you know, like Benson or Beltron. Uh, never mind. Uh, what size? What? The shoe size. Oh, oh yes. Um, uh, a nine. Oh, well, let me see if we have these in a nine. Um, have a seat, and well, I'll be right with you. Okay, I couldn't find that particular color, but let's just uh, try this style and just make sure we get a good fit there first. Oh my. <laughs> what service? Well, you know, we've been in business for well, quite some time now and we do things the way we always have. Huh, I see. Uh, and what do you do here? I mean, are you just a salesman? I'm the store manager. Ah, right, right. No, of course. You, <laughs> you're so good at keeping track of things and numbers and organizing all of that. No, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Of course you'd be a store manager. Perfect. <laughs> So, how does that feel? How long have you been doing this? What? This. Managing the store. Oh, 26 years. Hmm. Wow, and have you ever given it any thought uh, about doing 
another line of work, maybe something similar, but, you know, a little different. I suppose. <laughs> See, that's kind of what happened to me. I'm doing something that I've always wanted to do. How does that feel? I mean, that's why I'm here. I, this, things are getting out of hand, and I, I really could use some help keeping it all together. I, I meant the shoe. Oh, right, the shoe. Ha! Um... It's not really what I'm looking for. All right. And, uh, well, what might that be? Well... You. Me? I have a proposition for you. I know it might sound a little weird. And I don't mean it in any inappropriate way. No one ever does. But I want to talk to you. Not here. Can I buy you lunch? My name is Betsy Simon. I'm an author. My latest book, Heavens to Betsy, is on the bestsellers list. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the thing is, my career is really starting to take off and I'm losing my mind. Okay, I, I've worked full time at a dentist office as a receptionist for a long time now. Uh, and, and because of the success of the book, I've been doing these interviews, appearances, podcasts, you know, you, you name it. Uh, and it's, it's beginning to be a lot more than I can handle. My agent wants me to start working on my next book, which I'm trying to do, but it's, it's just getting to be more and more than I can handle alone. And that's where you come in. Me. You're really good at organizing and, and managing things. That's why you're a store manager. Yeah, you, you were born with it. So you're planning on opening a shoe store? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I need a PA. A PA? A, 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 a personal assistant. How oh, personal? You would help me do what I do. But you write books. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I know. So what does this have to do with shoes? Well, nothing. All right. Well, um, I don't understand why we're talking, other than the possibility that you actually are losing your mind, in which case I'm not going to be interested in any proposal of any kind. All right. I'll tell you the truth. With God as my witness, maybe he'll intervene. As crazy as it sounds, you and I have worked together before. You were my personal assistant. And you were good at what you did. And, and you helped me through some very difficult times, both professionally and as a friend. And the reason you wouldn't remember any of this is, is because it happened in an alternate reality where God was showing me what my life would have been like had all of my prayers been answered. It, it's all in my book. So I decided to track you down on the internet and see if maybe you wanted to work for me in this life because you were so good at it in the other one. Right. Well, I, um, uh, well, I have to uh, be going, Miss Simon, because uh, I, uh, I'm due back on the planet Earth. Wait! Brian, your watch. That's the watch that your father gave you a couple weeks before he died. You saw that on the internet? No, 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 no. That was something that you had told me in the other life. Okay, just think about it, all right? Take my card, think about it. You wouldn't even have to quit your job. It'd be part-time. I'd show you everything you need to know and pay you whatever you think is fair. This is Tammy Moore. On today's Shy Town Book Review, my guest is book author Betsy Simon. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Tammy. So your first books, which featured your cat Wishes, you wrote for children. Heavens to Betsy is clearly an adult novel, but it does have some childlike elements, maybe left over from your earlier books. How's that? It reminded me of a children's story, like 
Willy Wonka or Wizard of Oz. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's kind of like an adult morality story with a childlike, simplistic message of sort. How big of a part did your real experiences play in creating a work of fiction? Uh. It's not fiction. Sorry? It's not fiction. Everything that happened in that book really happened. God put me in an alternate reality, and he showed me what my world would have been like had all of my prayers been answered. Then he put me back, and I wrote a book about it. Brought you back? Yes. From where? An alternate reality. He did? Yeah, he did. God. God. And how's that even possible? Got me. Well, I certainly have a few prayers I'd like answered. Can you say a few for me? Well, you heard it here first, everyone. Betsy Simon's book, Heavens to Betsy, is based on fact, not fiction. How about that? What are you doing? Watching TV. No, the podcast. I made a promise to tell the truth. The truth? I know how it sounds. Do you? So you are telling me and everyone else who watched that podcast that you traveled to an alternate dimension or reality or universe or whatever? And came back? Yep. Are you sure that was the right decision? Nope. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know what you're going for here, but crazy is no way to sell books. I can't keep doing damage control. If I can't trust you to stay on message, I can't send you out to interviews or podcast appearances. If you're going to keep saying things like this, I need to know about them. Are we on the same page? Yes. I'm serious. You'll let me know? I'm letting you know. Right now. What do you mean? I gotta go. Talk later. Betsy? During a live podcast, I did what I felt was the right thing to do in God's eyes. And I told the interviewer that the book wasn't fiction. Okie doke. Okay, so if what you're saying is true, and let's just say for the sake of this very strange, but very interesting conversation that it is, uh, why are you telling me all this? Because you read the book. You believed me in the other life. But not till the end of the book. Well, does it have to take that long this time? I just thought because it was me, Betsy Simon, and this reality, the one that you knew that you would believe me. So, Sandy in the book is your sister, Sally. Yes. And then when God put Betsy, well, you, uh, back into this life, you had to lose her again. Why would you write about something so painful? Because it happened. I really need for you to believe me. Things are going to get complicated from here on out now that I've told the truth. Betsy, you know, I have always been there for you and your family, and I will do my best to be here for whatever you're going through. Whether it's in this or any reality. I'll take it. Miss Simon? Brian. Well, I'm calling to uh, let you know that um, I'm not a compulsive man, and I never do anything without doing plenty of research first. So I bought your book, and I watched the podcast that you were on. You didn't have to buy the book. I would have given you a copy. Well, that's very nice of you, but considering the circumstances, that's not necessary. That's what I liked about you. 
like. That, that's what I like. Before this becomes another episode from the Twilight Zone, I just want to say that I have decided that uh, no matter how much I love my job in shoe sales, I think it's time to explore other means of income. So I accept your offer. And uh, we, can, we can talk about the salary the next time we meet. That's great. Uh, I'm a little busy over here, so I got to go. But I will call you later with a time and place that we can meet up. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Mrs. Potterman, how good to see you again. <laughs> Mrs. Piscotti, what's wrong? Hey, the newspaper kid, can we do this now? We're here with our guest, Caroline Hopper, from the organization known as No God, a national organization dedicated to getting out deities in our society. Thank you, Tandem. So, Caroline, for the sake of our viewers who are unfamiliar with you and your organization, it's been around for how long now? It officially began three years ago this November. <laughs> and it's basically a, another organization that's attempting to reinforce the separation of church and state. Oh, no, no, Tandem. We're much more than that. We at No God are against all forms of subliminal force-fed religion, even within the context of everyday terms and phrases. Uh, can you give us an example? Mm, sneezing. Sneezing? Well, not sneezing itself, but the response, God bless you. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that somebody could be doing this out of habit and be completely unaware that it's happening. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. So who's behind this, Miss Hopper? Well, all perpetrators are unknown in any proposed conspiracy, Mr. Daiquiri. Conspiracy? Uh, no doubt. Well, being agnostic yourself, I'm sure you can agree that religious agenda is everywhere. It's sometimes buried deep inside simple things. Of course. But something a little more obvious? Well, just the other day I was watching a podcast with a young author who wrote a book about God placing her in an alternate universe to teach her a lesson and then transporting her back. Back where? Well, back to this universe. Kind of like Alice in Wonderland. I didn't read the book. I only watched the podcast because someone told me that no God is mentioned in the book. There's even a character that resembles me. <laughs> Really? Yes. <laughs> Does she have an obnoxious giggle? I'm sorry. Giggle? You're so bad. <laughs> Thank you. Great show. She's a nut. Yeah. I know who she was talking about. That author that wrote that book, Heavens to Betsy. I saw a clip of a podcast on Facebook. Pretty weird stuff. How's that? Thing is, she really believes she was in an alternate universe, just like Alice in Wonderland, and returned and wrote a book about it. No doubt. Like Miss Hopper said, she could be just doing it to increase her book sales. So? You said you needed some more filler shows. Tandem in Wonderland. Think of what you could do with that. We just did a show with a delusional woman who doesn't believe in God. How about one about a delusional woman who does? Put someone on. Already did. Thank you.
Well, I think that about covers it. You should be good to go. What? Is that new? Well, I just bought it. Why? You just had one like it in the other life. Well, where do you think I got the idea for it? What was it like? What was what like? The other life. It was unreal. Everything was the same. The people, the places. I was there, but I was somebody else. Betsy Simmons Burnett, the famous children's book author. Yeah. Well, except for there, I was Betsy Simon Bennett. The fame, the fortune, it all became so important. And I turned my back on my family. And most important, God. Aren't you afraid that maybe you'll go down that same path again? No, I, I know that I'm human and that I'm gonna make mistakes. But as long as I put God first, I'm in good hands. Not your will, but his will be done. <laughs> exactly. Well, I've got to be going. I have a lot of reading to catch up on. Oh, and I, I'm just curious. In the book, you said that you changed all the names of the characters. So why didn't you change mine? Uh, um, I guess because you were from the other life, I, I didn't think it'd matter. And to be honest, I wasn't even sure that you existed. <laughs> Maybe I don't. Well, for what it's worth, it's great to have you back. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. Have a good day. the friend of the wife of the thing and the, <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> yes, that's me. Do you live around here? Uh, no. But I heard about this place and yeah, it's it's becoming a regular. Or, or, or I'm becoming a regular. <laughs> uh, never knew there were Christian pop shops. Yeah, all the proceeds go to various Christian charities and organizations. I take it you are? I am. And you? As far as I know, I am. You sound a little unsure. When I was a teenager, my parents sent me to this Christian summer camp. I went with a friend. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know? Campfires, games, girls, puberty. Each night after dinner, there was there was a service. Some kids would sing songs, tell jokes, read from the Bible. Then the camp leader would try to get the kids to come to the altar, uh, you know, to be saved. But they were really 
pushy about it. Really? And, you know, in what way? It seemed like they wouldn't end the service until someone went to the altar. Huh. Really? Anyway, uh, there was this girl, and I was infatuated with her. And one night, she went to the altar, so... You did too. Yeah. So even though I was way too young to to know what it meant, I guess I was saved. And now? I don't know. Over the years, I, I've drifted away from the church. <laughs> Life has a way of complicating things. What about you, ever? Ever been to a Christian camp? No. No, I haven't, uh, but I, I was raised in a Christian home. Hmm. My parents always went to church when I was little. I'd say we prayed a lot. Um, unlike my older sister, Sally, I love to pray. We were close, Sally and I. Were? Yeah. You don't see her anymore? She died. My mom too. I'm sorry. It's okay. My mom died not too long ago. And when she did, my dad moved to Arizona. And your sister? She died when we were teenagers. She was 18. I was 17. Hi. Can I help you? Yes, I'm here to see Dr. Jorgensen. Please sign in. They just went to get something to eat. It's not good. Well, when do you start the treatments? I'm not. Oh. I, I don't get it, why not? You can't stop the inevitable. I put myself through hell. Feel like crap. Look like crap. And for what? To live. It's stage four, Betsy. Your mom and dad aren't, aren't going to let you. I'm 18. It's not up to them. you got to fight this. No. No. I don't. I, I am not them put all that crap in me and spend what time I have left bald and throwing up. I want to enjoy whatever time I have left. I'll pray for you. Malignant neoplasm of the cervix. It was rare for her age. That's why I thought that she'd beat it. But she might have had she not been so stubborn. She'd be hospitalized towards the end. Wow. Maybe that was too much too soon. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. For me. <laughs> Especially when I mentioned the puberty. <laughs> Would you like to go out for dinner one night?
Let me think about it. Okay. <laughs> For those of you just tuning in tonight on Chicago Christian Network, we have with us a very interesting and controversial guest whose latest book, Heavens to Betsy, has generated quite a bit of interest due to a recent podcast that has gone viral. Bessie Simon, you said that you had to be honest and tell the truth. Yes, Clarice. Apparently, you also are generating a bit of negative publicity, both you and your book. People have called you crazy. A self-proclaimed phony baloney prophet, is it? <laughs> and worse. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I want you to know that I, for one, I believe you. Thank you. A book like this can impact so many people. I mean, not just Christians, but people of all different faiths and backgrounds. And so what if not everyone believes that it happened? Pick up the book, read it, and decide for yourselves. Heavens to Betsy, the book. An amazing testimony into understanding God's will and one woman's spiritual journey. I like the new look. Thank you. Oh, you have a 4 p.m. phone interview tomorrow with the Christian Faith News Program. And, uh, oh, there's a Pastor Thomas from a church in the city, and he would like you to speak before his sermon on Sunday. Really? In, in front of the whole church? Yes. It looks like you're a hit with the Christians and religious organizations ever since your interview with Miss Staples. It's great. You know, I wasn't expecting all of this. Wishes is staring at me again. You know what they say about animals. They can sense things. I saw you on that Christian TV show. How did you know about... Your website. Oh. It shows how little I can keep track of those things. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for Brian. Brian? Brian, yeah, he's my personal assistant. Like, Brian. <laughs> uh, Betsy Simmons Burnett's PA in the book. You read it? You told me to buy it. Okay. So where do you stand? I mean, you gotta admit, it, it's pretty hard to believe. I am. Pretty used to people looking at me like I'm a total crazy person. Well, maybe I'm attracted to crazy women. And who are you, Robert Trainer? Um, uh, I come from a, a very poor family. Lost my father when I was a boy moved with my mom and sister to Chicago after I graduated high school. Went to Chicago State University, graduated, and now I'm an intern in the city. My favorite color is purple. Pizza is my comfort food, and I love Swiss almond ice cream. And I have a bad habit of picking my nose at stoplights. Too much? Yeah. Seriously, I... I'm a nobody right now, hoping that someday I'll be a somebody, just like Betsy Simmons did in her book. Are you sure you read it? Yes. Why? I don't know if you want to be that kind of somebody. She was on a Christian talk show recently. And they believed her. Well, that's not surprising. She's pretty convincing. Either she's one of the best manipulators I've seen in a long time, or she really believes what she says. So now she's playing to the Christian market. Smart move. God bless her. I know. But I was just thinking about the Dr. Haja interview we did, the plastic surgeon. Oh, the guy from Indonesia. Didn't even have his license, performed all those surgeries. Yeah. Yeah, it was like 60 minutes stuff. 
our highest rated show. No doubt. Don't do that. Sorry. How is this even close? Maybe we can make it sound that way. Like she's fooling Christians, using their faith to sell books. And that won't be hard, especially if you can get her to break down on camera. Okay, let's do it. Give me a copy of the book. You're good. I know. <laughs> but there is one problem, though. Her agent told us she said no. Quote, I'm not stepping one foot on that set. Patty, what are we doing here? What if we told her we'll do the interview wherever she wants? Where? The church she goes to is very old, and they're trying to raise money for repairs to keep it open. What if we offered to make a sizable donation in exchange for doing the interview there? That could be fine. I'll contact her agent. Now, like you said, we're still going to need something that'll make her lose it during the interview. You have something, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you know who Tandem Daiquiri is? I do. I am not fond of him, but I do. He wants me on his show. But I've seen what he does to his guests, so I told him no. Good. You don't need him. I know. But I was thinking maybe the church does. How's that? Anne called me yesterday. She says he wants to donate to the church's fundraiser in exchange for an interview with me. Really? A very generous donation. Uh-huh. But I already refused to do an interview at his studio, so he said he would go anywhere that I wanted. And why would they go to that extreme? I don't know, for ratings? <laughs> because he thinks I'm crazy and wants to embarrass me? Oh, that's just what he does. But I was thinking, maybe we could do it here? Oh, Betsy. I know that the church needs the money, and I really don't mind taking a little verbal beating and embarrassment, especially if it'll do some good. I'll bet your agent's all about it for the exposure, right? But that's not why I'm willing to do it. What if this is God's will? Maybe all of this is falling into place because he wants me to do this. And the exposure will be great for the church's fundraiser. That would depend on Tandem Daiquiri. He can not only make you look foolish for what you said about the book, he can ruin your career. That is also something he does. I know. Plus, the elders would never approve doing it for the money, and I would have to agree with them. Well, why not? To do so would be to sell out. It would dishonor God. No, it would have to be for another reason. I, a matter of faith, for example. It is wonderful that you would consider risking your career for the church. I mean, it means the world. And it shows that even with all your success, it hasn't changed who you are in this world like it did in the other one. Wait, what? So you believe me? No. Again? Pastor John? Tandem Daiquiri. Sorry for the intrusion. What a surprise. I'll bet. So I heard you turned down Betsy's proposal. It wasn't just my decision. Of course. You're actually, that's why I'm here. I just wanted to tell you in person how much I admire that decision. You know, even in light of the church's need for financial support, that they would turn down such a generous donation, really a story within itself. 
A story for another show, not yours. I do have a reputation, I know. Beautiful church. When was it built? 1874. Really? And the bell in the steeple, does it still ring? Yes. Fantastic. It'd be a shame to have to close the doors. How's the fundraising going? Okay. Uh, we are hopeful that God will hear our prayers and provide what we need. Or maybe he won't. Like in Betsy Simon's book. <laughs> you know, on the other hand, with her track record, maybe she should do all the prayers. Anyway, I'm sure you're a busy man. I know I am. Again, I just wanted to stop by and and let you know that uh, I really respect the decision not to let Betsy Simon use the church. You know, it's pretty obvious that uh, she's not mentally stable. And an uh, interview like this could be embarrassing for everyone involved. The truth is, Mr. Dacquery, that you have little, if any, respect for anyone you interview on your show. That's my job. And it's your job not to support someone like Betsy Simon, whose motivations are clearly not, for lack of a better phrase, faith-based. Have a good day, Pastor. Oh, and Pastor, if she doesn't want to defend herself here, I'll just go on the air and rip her to shreds there. Pastor John, what a surprise. I'm sorry, I hope it's okay to show up you know, you know what? I should have called. Uh, no, it's fine. Hey, come on in. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need to tell you something. Um, how do I do it? Okay, okay. okay. You know what? Remember in Rocky II, the movie, when Mickey, his manager, shows up unexpectedly at Rocky's house because he has just heard Apollo Creed shoot his mouth off on television, and now he tells him that we should knock his block off. I never saw Rocky II. Oh. Uh. Oh, well, that goes that analogy. Okay, well then, I'm just going to say it. I had a visit from Mr. Daiquiri the other day at the church. He came to the church? Yes, and he lived up to his reputation as being just a, well, just a real piece of, well, just, uh, just a real piece of... Work. Okay. Yeah, that's better than where I was going. The elders, they have now approved the interview. They did? They did. I don't understand. Well, after my meeting with Mr... Daiquiri, I was inspired, let's say, to go back to the elders with a new proposal. They have approved the use of the church for you. Really? Yes. Why? Oh, Betsy, you are willing to risk your career and make a fool of yourself, all to represent our Heavenly Father. That, my dear, is a matter of faith. There are some conditions. The biggest one being, they have got to give you a complete list of all the questions they're gonna ask you for your approval so we can somehow minimize the chance of embarrassment. Yeah, I like that. Me too. Any advice on how I should prepare for this? Well, I would watch a Rocky movie and lots and lots of prayer. Which, you know, I've read your book, so I know you're a bit of an expert at that. That's all for today, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Dacry. Excuse me. Yes. Robert. Robert. Uh, um, 
there's a question here that has to do with something uh, she told me in private. Ah. And the element of surprise is the key to a good interview, Richard. Robert. Robert. Unexpected responses, emotions, drama, all good stuff. <laughs> You're an intern. You're learning. I'm sure. But in hindsight, it was something she told me in private. Really? Then you should have kept it in private. Well, I do admire your sense of fairness just the same. He's done. Got it. Sign for him after that. Hi. Hi. What? There's something I think you should know. Remember when I told you I was an intern? Yeah. Well, I'm an intern at Tandem Daiquiri's production company. Really? Yeah. So you know about the interview at the church? Yes. Okay. So you work for an egotistical, self-serving, hypocritical media vampire. Yeah. Yeah. But not for him directly. So you'll be coming to the interview? I'd like to. Great. Look, it's okay. All right, I'm not gonna hold that against you. He is who he is. I gotta go. I came by just to stop and get some coffee on my way home. I gotta prepare for the interview and go over all the questions that he's gonna ask me. Betsy. What? I'll see you at the interview. Okay. Are you okay? Are you comfortable with the questions? Yeah. I'm, I'm good. Good. Well then, I will see you afterwards. Gentlemen, can I get your attention, please? We are moments away from starting the interview. I know we have several Tandem Daiquiri fans in the house today. Yeah. And of course, I know we have some fans of Heavens to Betsy the book. Yeah. I would just like to remind all of you to please be respectable throughout the interview. Let everyone up here do what they need to do. There's a scene in the first Rocky. It's the night of the big fight against Apollo Creed, and Rocky, he's ready to fight 
but he's worried. So he tells Adrian, that's his girlfriend, that it doesn't matter if he wins the fight as long as he goes the distance. Because then, and only then, he will know he's not just another bum from the neighborhood. Okay, have you not seen any Rocky films? I don't know what any of that means. What it means is that you're like Rocky. You are not in this for the fame and fortune. You're doing it for something that's important to you. And in this case, it's defending the truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you oversee the upcoming interview and that you help Betsy find the right words to express herself keeping to your word. We thank you, Father, for answering Betsy's prayers and giving her the opportunity for continued success in your name. Amen. Okay, now what about Creed? Okay, no, no, that's the one where he actually has to train Apollo's kid. Okay, everyone is seeing Creed. Betsy's a good friend of mine. Oh? Ronnie Love. Uh, um, sorry? My stage name. Maybe you've heard of me. Oh, uh, sorry. You will someday. I'm an actress. I'm used to all of this. The cameras, the lights. When I heard she was going to do this, I thought I'd come just in case she needed some professional advice about how to deal with it. You sound like an amazing friend. She's lucky to have you. I know, right? Tandem Daiquiri, the host. Betsy Simon, the crazy Christian. Ha! Sorry we didn't get a chance to meet prior to the interview. That would have been the proper thing. Yes, it would have. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling. Speed in three, two. Shortly after its release, Betsy Simon's book, Heavens to Betsy, hit the bestseller list and stayed there for the last six months. The book tells the story of an aspiring children's book author whose prayer for fame and fortune is answered by God himself, transporting her to an alternate universe where not only does she get the fame and fortune, but everything she has ever prayed for. The book has been called a modern day Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland. David Claymore of the Chicago Press has called it entertaining, heartwarming, and magical. But as of late, the book has gotten even more attention because the author claims that the story in the book is not fiction, but fact. Hello, Betsy Simon. Hello. So I read Heavens to Betsy, and I thought it was delightful. Thank you. When did you start writing books? Well, I, I wrote a short story in high school that won an award, and I just kept writing after that. So you have a mother and a sister who are both deceased, and your father lives in Arizona. I, I see you've done your homework. Yes, that's all correct. This is not your first novel, is that correct? I've, I've written four children's books that have featured my cat, Wishes. Well, that seems obvious, seeing as how the character in your book, Betsy Simmons, has a cat named Wishes and writes children's books. Right, yeah, I, I didn't change her name. She wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> so when the book came out, your agent promoted it as a work of fiction. Yes. And now you said in many interviews that it's not fiction. Is that correct? Yes. If that's so, 
then Betsy Simmons, who is obviously you, has been transported to an alternate universe by a cosmic entity. It's safe to say God in here. No need for political correctness, Mr. Daggery. <laughs> and what was that like? What? Living in an alternate universe. Um, it was confusing at first, but... Confusing? No doubt. <laughs> it was like I was in an alternate timeline. Like Back to the Future. If you have God, who needs a DeLorean? <laughs> Miss Simon. Betsy. Please, just Betsy. Betsy. Are you now or have you ever been in therapy? No. Why do you need a referral? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can understand how some people might think that I was crazy, but there are others who don't. Christians, to be exact. You know, ever since the reveal, your book has done quite well in that market. Why do you think that is? Because people of faith know that through God, all things are possible. Isn't it unethical to exploit a religion for financial gain? <sighs> unethical. Exploitation. Wow, did you of all people just say that? You wrote in your book that at one point, you ask God to put you back to your original life. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you killed your sister, didn't you? Did it not bother you that asking God to put you back to the way things were would essentially be killing your sister for a second time? And that by asking God to do that, you would be responsible? You wrote in your book that after much prayer, your sister died while you were in your teens. And then when he answered your prayer, put you into this alternate universe, he brought her back. But that didn't go very well once you found out that she had been stealing from you and your husband's company. And at least I know what I did. And you'll never forgive me. I have to know what you guys are going to do. So just do it. So if the book is fact, then you more or less were playing judge and jury and asking God to put things back the way they were. Therefore, handing your sister a death sentence. Really? You see, I think that's the flaw in your story. Nobody would honestly do something that would kill somebody they loved as much as you apparently loved your sister, all for the sake of religion. In 2006, Oprah Winfrey rebuked James Fry, author of A Million Little Pieces, for lying about his past and portraying his book as a truthful account of his life. In her words, betraying millions of readers. Isn't that what you're doing here? Look, I know these are different circumstances, but tell me, why should we believe you? Miss Simon? Why would God allow your sister to die, not once, but twice?
Janet, he's in a better place now. I know, Papa. You'll see him again. Not too soon, I hope. Sally, your sister's very upset. Okay. Betsy, would you like to say a prayer? I don't know. How about you, Sally? Not really. He's just a peanut is not just a cat. Can I say it to myself, Papa? Of course you can, honey. We don't need to hear it. Nobody does. It will just be between you and God. Why? Why? Because it was God's will. And being a non-believer, I don't expect you to understand that. When someone we love dies, we say, how could God let that happen? I know, I asked that question over and over again when my sister passed away. And it's so easy to blame him because it's so much harder to accept the fact that these events ultimately have a purpose. So I leave it all up to him, trusting that he will show me the way to live the life that he wants me to live and be the person that he wants me to be. And I wanted to take what God had shown me and share it with the world in the only way that I knew how, through my passion for writing. A person's relationship with God is the most intimate bond that any human being can have. And if you reject the possibility of a creator communicating with his creation, well, there's really nothing that I can say that will change that. Mr. Daiquiri, this interview isn't about me, or my book, or why I wrote it. It's about you wanting to make it look like I'm taking advantage of Christians by appealing to their sentiments and faiths or whatever in order to make money, which is what you're doing here for ratings and to profit off of those who don't believe in God. And that, Mr. Daiquiri, makes you a hypocrite. Or should I call you by your real name? Marion Pickle. <laughs> You're not the only one who did their homework. Mr. Pickle. <laughs> what happened was between me and God. And it doesn't matter what you think. Any more questions? No. I think that covers it. So did you. Me? What did I do? You were there for me, just like you said you And you know what? It doesn't matter if you believe me. Who said I did? Gotta take care of some business upstairs.
Good show, Betsy Simon. Really? Really? And we want you to know, we're still going to make the donation. What? Even after the way it just ended? No doubt. <laughs> Everyone loves a hero. Good night, Betsy Simon. Your boss just left. He's, uh, he's not my boss. Not anymore. I was fired. Oh. For being deceptive. No. I objected to him using the information that I gave him about uh, your sister. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Betsy. When they asked me to get information about you, I, I, I was just doing my job. Never expected to feel the way I I do about you. I I did a terrible thing. Any chance you'd forgive me? Well, you picked a good place to ask for forgiveness. something else. After watching you, I decided to ask the pastor if he'd help me recommit my life to God. Are you sure this isn't just another case of infatuation? No. Clarification. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, and congratulations are in order. For what? For Heavens to Betsy selling a million copies.
how does it feel? Good. She thinks so too. She feels great. <laughs> She's you. a big part of this. Yeah, I know. So you're not afraid of um, making the same mistakes again? No. Although it is a little strange that you're now dressing like you did in the other life. Well, you know, one has to keep up appearances. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you sound as if you now believe everything I wrote. I never told anyone that my father gave me this one. Not in this life. Well, goodbye, wishes. Thank you, Brian Manley. Wishes. 